Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here with a get ready with me, hence the crazy hair. I have my hair up in my heatless curlers and I just thought I would keep it up for simplicity's sake in this video um, while I'm getting ready. So I asked on both Instagram and YouTube for some questions for a Q&A. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to do a get ready with me while answering some questions. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into it. But before I do so, if you're new here, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you in the family. Let's jump into the video. So I have some rings, but I might actually take them off while I get ready because I don't want to go close of makeup on them or yeah, just make them messy. So usually what I do when I start my makeup routine is I just put on a serum. Currently I'm using the Yeof. Um, this is the nice cinnamon serum, I think. Yes. So I use any serum to be honest in the morning. Usually it's a vitamin C or a nice cinnamon. I um, am mixing the two or like I'm alternating days on the two. So I used to apply this all over as my first step. Once that is on, um, I do the follow up with my sunscreen and that is my Biore UV water essence. This is the SPF 50. I love this one. This is actually almost gone. This is the Aqua Rich version and I really like this because, sorry, like I said, it's almost gone. Um, I really like this because it is very lightweight and it sits very well on the makeup and it doesn't really feel like a sunscreen. So I apply that and then I move into kind of more makeup stuff. So while I continue doing my makeup, let's move on to questions. Let's start over on Instagram um, with the questions there. So the first question I have is what do you do for work? So I work in sales. Um, I'm gonna move on to my actual serum now. This is oh, like my primer, this is my e.l.f. Hydrating Primer Serum. So I'm gonna apply that. So yeah, I work in sales. Um, I have worked in sales now for a while. I did work for a company before, which worked more in like real estate sales or like almost more like a consultancy thing. Um, but now I work in a company who sells promotional goods and I am, if you don't know, I think a lot of my views know, but I am Swedish originally, but I live in London and I, yeah, I work with a company, again, selling promotional goods. It's mainly B2B sales um, and I work the Swedish and Norwegian market because Swedish and Norwegian are very similar languages and currently we don't have a Norwegian in our team, so I cover that market too. Um, so it's kind of like account management. I um, have my own accounts, I have my own customers. That I work with it's quite a few I have like thousands of customers in my account so it's quite a large account um but yeah that's basically what I do so yeah it's, it's it's fun I like it I really love it I love my team I love the people I work with I love the company so I do quite enjoy it next thing I'm going to move on to is my second primer that I'm currently planning this is my Pat McGrath lab skin fetish Sublime Perfection Primer. This is more of a smoothing primer, whereas the e.l.f. one is more hydrating. So I have actually been layering them, which I'm doing today again. So let me just go ahead and I focus it mainly on my like, T-zone. Um, and then I like, smooth it out when I move along. So those are on my primers. So while I let those sink in, I usually move on to my eyes. So I'm going to do that now too. And I'm going to zoom you guys in when I do my eyes. So let me go ahead and do that now. So let's move on to the uh, next question, which is from Nico Eyes. She says, have you ever not bought something because it would be hard to pan or the other way around? Um, I don't think I have, to be honest. I feel like, um, I don't know. I don't feel like I think of that when I purchase things. Um, I kind of, in my head, wish that I had certain products that would be easier to pan. You know, I've seen people pan like the like large kind of 88 palettes like the old Coast and Stones palettes or things like that I thought oh that would be amazing to have as a panda palette for the variety and like how small the shapes are um but I haven't really like bought anything because of that I'm gonna apply my primer by the way this is my P. Louise base in white I finished up the other one like the color one I have so I'm kind of using the white one which is not my favorite I mean it does create like a nice canvas but um yeah, I, I feel like this would be way too light for me when we get into summer. So I'm just trying to use it now when we're still in winter. And I usually blend that out with a brush. But yeah, and back to the question. I don't think I have. Again, I've had products where like what I thought, like I've seen on YouTube and stuff. And I thought, oh, that would be amazing to have. But I haven't actually bought them just to pan. Um, same thing, I haven't never really 
thought about not buying something because it would be harder to pan so I would say no I haven't uh, I definitely thought of it but no it doesn't really like affect my purchasing decisions so I'm gonna move on to my eye look that I'm doing and um, I'm gonna do like a green look that I've been wearing a couple of videos because I thought some people have asked like how I've done it so I want to do it here and I'm also trying to pan my green in my panda palette which is the Nicktoros palette so I thought I would do this look today so moving on to the next question we have from uh, Joanna Smalley um, I think that's how you say her name or is it maybe it's Joanna S. Mali? I think it's Joanna Smalley. She's she's amazing. She's on uh, Instagram. So go check her out if you haven't. But anyway, she's asking you, what's your favorite lip product to wear? So um, when it comes to lip products, it changes all the time. Currently, honestly, I'm very bad at using lip products that aren't in product pans because I'm very, very determined to finish the ones I'm using. But if I'm going out, um, I'm loving the Kaleidos... Um, what do they call the cloud lip paints? I absolutely love those. Um, they're probably my favorite to go to if I want to like reach for something for going out for dinner or something like that. Um, yeah, I feel like all whatever colors works for you, but that is kind of my favorite formula right now, I would say. Um, yeah, so that's probably my pick. I also really like the Fenty glosses. Um, right now, I really really love those. That's another one that I usually go for if I want like um use something that I can wear when going out and um, I've also been loving the Sigma lip oil similar thing like something just to, to throw on um, so those are probably my top picks color wise I really love matte kind of sexy that's my, one of my favorite nudes I also really love um, KVD liquid lipstick in Ophelia that's another one of my favorites so I feel like those are some of my favorite lip products right now and for the Kaleidos Cloud Lab lip um, paints or whatever they're called they um the colors that i have is sienna adobe skinship and scorpion fruit scorpion fruit is like a black so i don't wear that very often but the other three i do wear so for the look right now by the way i'm applying my uh, green in my panel palette called um u like e w all over my lid as a base um i'm not going to show you the pan because i don't want to spoil anything for my panel palette updates but that is what i'm doing now so next question we have is from Ruth. Ruth um, Foley here on YouTube, I think. Um, her name on Instagram is Kippins Beauty Blog, uh, and she asked, "Are you in the UK for good, or will you ever move home?" So um, I think I, I do think I'm going to stay in the UK for quite a while. Obviously, I have like my little family here. It's not like a proper. I mean, I have my boyfriend and my dog, and that's our little family. So, I mean, I have them here. So, I mean, honestly, my boyfriend is probably more keen to moving to Sweden than I am. Um, because, I don't know, he just, I think he wants to try to live there. I have gone back and forth when I, like, I mean, I, this time around, I'm going to cover this a bit later. But this time around, I lived in the UK now for, like, over four years. And recently is the first time that I'm starting to feel, like, a little bit more homesick. Um, it's more kind of, like... I think losing contact with my friends back home and uh, like seeing my family and stuff like my brother for example he recently moved quite close to where my parents are like an hour away from where my parents live so I know they see each other like all the time and I think it's a bit of like FOMO like a bit of you know they see each other all the time and I kind of like envy that a little bit um, and because of that I have considering like you know maybe one day I will move back home and um, we even just like if I have the finances for it, get like a, a summer house or something in Sweden to spend like summers there, a couple of months there a year. But I don't think that's going to be anytime soon. I I love it in the UK. I do love Sweden. I love being Swedish. I love being from there. I feel like I have a lot of benefits. I love the way I grew up. I, I don't envy the school system here in the UK. If we do have kids here, I'm a bit cautious about like how the school system works. I feel like it's a bit harsher than it is back home um but it, overall even though i love sweden i feel like it's always been like a bit too small for me a bit too like sweden is a bit massive country um it's nine million people living in the whole country which is basically the length of half of europe um if you look on a map you can see how big it is surface wise and there's like nine million now maybe now it's like almost 10 million but it's the same size almost people wise as in london itself which is one city um so i feel like 
it's always felt a bit too small for me even stockholm or like the big cities in sweden always feels very very small to me so because of that i i don't know i just feel like there's more to do here i feel more at home here in the uk or like in london specifically so no i don't think i'm gonna move back at least not anytime soon but i also know that no matter how much you plan in life things never pan out the way you plan them to so i'm just gonna see what happens but right now no i'm not planning to move back i think i'm gonna stay in the uk for quite a while again i have like my dog and my boyfriend here so it would make sense staying speaking of my boyfriend next question is actually from him <laughs> he said your boyfriend seems very cool can you see more of him please uh yes you can i mean if if you guys want to see him in more videos let me know down below he did <laughs> he thought that answering my um section would be an anonymous so he was hoping just to like put the little idea in there but again if you want to see any more videos let me know um uh, he would love to do videos so any suggestions let me know but anyway next question is from dreaming of sugar she said how do you handle breaking a product or wasting it um before moving into that i feel like i'm neglecting my look a little bit i've just been packing on this eyeshadow for ages but that again was the green from my palette palette the next eyeshadow i'm gonna go in with is from my book of magic palette it's another one that i'm panning currently and that is the shade amulet i'm gonna show you because i have a big dip in it but no pants so not no spoilers yet and i update this isn't too too soon so i thought i would show you anyway and i'm gonna use this to blend out the green eyeshadow uh, creating more like of a neutral green in my crease so yeah how how do i handle breaking a product or wasting it so i i try not to obviously break something but it happens it happens to all of us uh when i do how i handle that is basically just try to salvage as much of the product as i can if i break an eyeshadow for example i try to salvage what i can from it and then repressing it for example um i also recently actually broke my concealer it was the all the, the packaging broke on my um maybelline fit me concealer luckily it was a cheaper concealer but the wand just completely broke off uh it didn't get stuck in no, luckily it was like breaking off like partly out of the packaging so i was able to get it out so currently i'm storing the wand outside of the lid and every time i use it it's like in the wand um by itself like getting product out so i'm going to try to do that as long as i can but obviously the wand doesn't reach all the way down because it is broken so you know i try to get as much product as i can out um out of whatever i broke or repress it or try to sell it as much as i can and i try not to think too much about it obviously if i broke something like you know if, let's say if i dropped my single eyeshadow palette and all my indie singles broke i would be devastated i'm not gonna lie i would be devastated um but yeah i just try not to worry too much about it and i try to salvage what i can basically so i blended that out um i'm just gonna take a brush with some leftover skin type like color this is usually my blending out brush um i'm not gonna add any more kind of skin colored um eyeshadow for now i'm just gonna blend that out a little bit more and yeah that's basically what i'm gonna leave my crease as so you know you can mix colors this is what i usually do like this bright green with that like kind of brown color like the orange brown color that i showed you from my book of magic palette the one there in the middle um it creates this like murky green so it's quite nice to mix colors which is a tip of mine then the last matte eyeshadow i'm gonna add to this look is my uh from my modern Renaissance palette this is the shade cypress sombra which is a really really deep brown i'm not gonna show you again because we are getting closer to my panda palette update and i don't want to spoil anything um but yeah i'm gonna just add this into my outer corner so the next question is from V underscore books and pans and she asked how did you start to wear bold eyeshadows in daily looks feel comfortable wearing it so um this is actually a pretty good example of using bright eyeshadows in like more of an everyday look because i have worn this look both working from home and going to the office actually um and i just feel like i don't know how i started doing it honestly i think it probably comes from panning like I think starting to do panels eyeshadows back in the day when you had to randomize eyeshadows I feel like that really meant that I had to be creative with using colorful looks um, I started by slowly introducing like bright colors uh, and pairing them in more neutrals uh, and I think that's kind of the way to go when you first start off um, then I feel like you just kind of pairing it with like I said pairing it in more neutrals um and just just go out like it's not gonna be too overpowering obviously some offices which i think is a bit stupid 
put like dress code on your makeup and stuff so obviously keep that in consideration if you are bringing something like this to the office but maybe you start doing this kind of looks on the weekend and going like you know to the pub or to the shop whatever you just go and wear it for like you know a short trip out and start that way and then build up your confidence wearing looks because honestly I can stare at people's makeup so if they're colorful makeup I, I just stare at it and I'm just like that's so beautiful um so I feel like I don't know I feel like we judge ourselves maybe more than other people do there's always gonna be people judging but just wear what makes you happy um also maybe try doing colorful looks but then topping it up with more neutral like sparkles or something like that to tone it down or like I'm doing today like I'm starting with this really really bright green which is gonna be seen for the look but I'm toning it down with a lot of other more neutral kind of leaning greens um, and neutral colors so that's probably what i would recommend it's really hard though um but you do i feel like you start small and you will get more confident with time the last question i have from instagram is from my friend martina she's saying when i'm meeting up uh we can meet up whenever just let me know when you're free i love seeing you but yeah that's all the questions from instagram let's move on to questions from youtube i have a couple more things from youtube so let's start jumping into those but before i do so i'm actually gonna put on my glitter glue which is the Too Faced glitter glue i'm gonna put this on my lid and i'll start with shimmers and i'm just packing this basically all over my lid slightly onto that dark brown but not covering it completely so next up what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take my eyeshadow this green one here which i'm trying to pan in my bullet pan and i'm gonna pat that all over the lid so while I do that, let's answer a question from YouTube. So Christina Kelly is asking, as a person who pans a lot of different things at the same time, how do you not become obsessive over it and show love to the rest of your collection while still reaching your goals in panning? So honestly, this is one of the things that I am struggling the most with. Um, it's just kind of showing love to the rest of my collection uh, while panning because I'm very stubborn and as like a person in general, I'm very, very stubborn um which could be a good thing or a bad thing um like you can turn stubborn into determined so you know that could be a good thing but i i'm very determined when it comes to padding i want to have good progress i want to have good updates um which means that sometimes i neglect things that aren't in projects uh one thing that i've done this year is actually create goals and projects where i have to reach for the rest of my collection like one of my goals this year is to reach for every single eyeshadow in my collection which means that I will actually reach for things outside of uh, projects however some of them I still only reach for once and then put them away so it is a hard balance for me to reach honestly but if you are like me if you're really stubborn if you are really like determined to use things I would put goals maybe outside your project i do goals on instagram as well we like monthly panning goals and sometimes that is reach for like a hundred unused eyeshadows reach no pound of behind outside on palettes things like that because it'll mean that i reach for things that aren't in panning projects um so i don't know it is hard it's definitely something that i'm still working on but that's probably my main tip is just adding separate goals outside of panning and yeah just just try to reach for things that way so there we have my green eyeshadow again i just packed that all over then the kind of last thing i did before in my look was pat it over the shade cosmic noon from terra moons because i had that in my um in this project which is my uh product i'm again and i forgot the name of it but i tried to use my singles 10 times each so i will do something similar but i will use a different shadow today i think the shadow that i want to go with to pack over this is the shade um half moon from terra moons which is slightly more blue and um, then green but i will pat this on top but yeah just consider that i did use to put like a more um green shade on top of this for my look but otherwise this look exactly the same as those green looks that i wore in a couple of videos so you can see the difference there with like the uh, topper shade and without the topper shade and there you have the main eye look and uh, this is how i made my green look and again it's gonna turn out a bit more kind of tealy minzy i would say so i think my camera cut out uh but i was saying that the eye look might look a bit different because i've topped it with that minty shade or like that more kind of bluey shade um instead of that warm green so it might look a bit more minty also i'm applying my under eye corrector from becca underneath my eyes if you wonder what i'm doing 
um, because I'm not sure if that was caught on camera or not. But let's move on to the next question, which was from Martha Lee. I think that's how you say her name. And she asked, I would love to know what you miss and don't miss about living in Sweden. Bonus makeup question, what have been or is your favorite Swedish brand slash products both from the past and today? So let's start with the first half of the question. The number one thing that I miss from Sweden is obviously my friends and family. I think that would be most people's answer. Both my parents and my brother live in Sweden still. Most of my best friends live in Sweden, like all my uni friends and everyone lives in Sweden. I have one uni friend actually from that friends group who live in London as well, which is amazing. But apart from that, most of my best friends live in Sweden, so I don't really see them very often. I see them maybe like twice a year, if that. So obviously that is like one of the main downsides. And um, apart from the obvious, the number one thing that I miss, which might sound a bit funny, is gro grocery stores and the selection we have in grocery stores in Sweden. Um, I don't know if, about comparing to like the UK, I feel like the quality of food we have here is not the same as in Sweden. Like there are certain things that I love here and I remember living in Sweden I missed those specific things uh, from the UK. Um, but overall I just miss the selection in grocery stores. Um, for example like bread, like the bread in Sweden is so much better than here. Like. If you buy bread, either you get like really nice like sourdough, like bakery good spread, um, or you can get like basically toast toast bread, which is you know it's fine. But in Sweden we have like for the same section as like the toast bread here, I guess we have like really nice breads, um, you know, and that's it's it's super like it's just better quality. I would say so much better selection. Same with like certain foods and stuff. We just have a lot of like selection we don't have here um i don't know it's hard to explain but that's probably what my like my, my things that i miss the most about sweden is the grocery selection um yeah i would probably say that the thing what anything else that i miss um nature maybe but it's obviously also because i live in london um, but nature in general, Sweden, we have coast almost everywhere because it's such a skinny, long country. Um, I miss that. I grew up by the coast. I grew up in a small town where I had like a view for the sea from my bedroom. I could walk to the sea in like less than five minutes. If you walked even like two minutes the other way, uh, you had the woods. It was just a really nice place to grow up, so I miss that. Um, I think those are my, my top things. So my friends, my like food selection in grocery stores and the nature. I don't know. I think those are the top ones that I miss. Um, Culture-wise, it's pretty similar in the UK to Sweden. I think one thing that I don't miss is that people in Sweden can be quite close-minded. Um, and I'm not saying everyone, obviously it depends who you're talking to, not, not everyone is the same. But also like you don't really talk to strangers, you don't really like socialize. I always used to use this example when I first moved to London, is that I used to... Like if you went out like clubbing or whatever, or like in a bar, and then you got too warm or you wanted to go for a smoke. I don't smoke, but if you wanted to, you got in that area, like the smoking area, used to get some air. Is that you and one more person there? you would not speak to each other in Sweden. Like you would, again, it depends, like not everyone is the same, but in general, like you would not speak to each other. Um, but like, you know, the only reason I would, I would say they spoke to you is one, you know that you have a friend in common, or like obviously if you know each other, or obviously like if they're trying to flirt with you. That's like the only reason someone would talk to you in that situation. Otherwise you stand there by yourself and eventually one of you would go inside and that would be that. But I love that here you're kind of more like people who speak to you um, and it's like they're not expecting anything out of it. They just like chat because it's nice and then they disappear. Um, and you know, it's just refreshing. I love, I love that. That's one thing I don't miss. Also where I'm from, people are close-minded in other ways. People are quite judgmental about other cultures. Again, that just depends where you live and obviously who you're talking to, but in general. And it's just something that I don't really miss. I am very open-minded as a person. I love learning about different cultures. And that's one of the reasons why I live in London. So yeah, that's something that I don't really miss. Um, also, by the way, for my base, I used my foundation that I panicked, which is the X-Expert Revolution Foundation. This is the... It just says foundation. 
but yeah, it's this one that looks like this. And then I also use my Naked Concealer from Urban Decay. Uh, so that's kind of what I've used so far. So I would say those are probably the top ones. I mean, there's obviously more things that I could mention, but I think those are the first things that come to mind. Uh, when it comes to favorite makeup brands in Sweden, uh, honestly, I don't really have any right now favorites. Like, I don't really use much Swedish makeup like stuff. Um, probably... Linda Hallberg using her puff right now. That would be a recommendation. I haven't tried enough from her, but I want to. Um, funny story, actually, she's from the same town as me, so maybe you can look it out up if you want to. Uh, and she went. She was back, like really close friends to my cousin. Her, my cousin, they it was like best friends with her um, childhood boyfriend. And uh, yeah. My cousin basically knows her quite well. They went to like, the same school together. I don't know if they were in the same class, but they went to school together. And they used to hang out, which was really interesting. I've actually seen her as well a couple of times uh, back home in my hometown. So yeah, I that's probably one of the brands that I want to try more of and would recommend. It's quite artsy, it's quite, I mean, I think it's quite big in other places too, um, like not to Sweden. Lumina is another brand. I know that's not Swedish, but it's Scandinavian. I think it's Finnish originally. It's Adora is another brand. Um, I don't really have any specific recommendations, honestly, because I haven't tried anything from these brands in a while or at all. Um, another brand I don't think a lot of people know, know is Swedish is actually Pixi. Pixi by Petra. So Petra is a uh, Petra, as you would say in Swedish. She is a Swedish makeup artist and she created Pixi. I think. The flagship store is in London, not in like, Sweden, but it, she is Swedish and it's, I guess it's a Swedish brand. Obviously Odensai is also Swedish, that's something that I right now is one of my favorite brands from Sweden uh, because it's more of an indie brand as well. Um, so those are probably the brands I would mention. Again, I don't unfortunately don't have any other specific like makeup products. Also, for like old favorites, I used to love makeup store. That is a Swedish brand that was very, very big back in the day. So that's another recommendation. And then also an old favorite used to be H&M Makeup. Now and other stores also do, does makeup. H&M is a Swedish clothing line and, and other stores is a branch underneath them. So I would probably say those. Um, yeah, those are probably my, the brands I would recommend uh, or used to love. Moving on to the next question, we have, have you ever been makeup shamed? If yes, how did you handle it? I wear colorful makeup and have been myself by family and a co-worker. This is Mitch. A uh, good day, I think. Uh, by the way, so sorry that happened to you. I don't think I've ever have been makeup shamed. And I'm not sure how I would handle it. I'll probably just shrug it off. I'll probably be like, I wouldn't really say anything, I think. It is hard though, especially if you're someone who's trying to be confident about wearing colorful makeup and then you hear something like that. I would probably knock your confidence quite a bit. I would just not think about it. I think it's uh, when ev every someone shames you, whatever it is. I always think it says more about that person than just you, so just, I know it's probably really hard, I mean it's easy for me to say, but my biggest advice is probably try to just not take on board anything they say and just try to remember that it says more about them than just you, and yeah, just try to shrug it off as much as you can. The next question is from Christy C, she's asking, what was your first experience with makeup? Like, did you take your mom's makeup or did you buy your own gift, etc.? My mom has never really been into makeup at all. Um, she only still has like a very, very small basket with makeup. I remember I did use to steal some of hers, whatever she had at home when I was younger. Um, but I think it was mainly just purchasing my own because she didn't really have much that I could steal. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I definitely remember up to even being a teenager, I used to like steal her things. There was like a, she had like a shimmery kind of, it was like a liquid almost highlighter, but it was very, very silver, very glittery. I think it was mainly for your collarbones and shoulders and stuff, but I remember I used to steal that and put it all over. Uh, but yeah, it was, I think my main experience with makeup was probably just buying it myself, um, going shopping with my friend. We went to the town over because we didn't really have a place to shop where I lived. So I used to go to the town over and buy stuff like, you know, the Maybelline Mousse Foundation was one of them, uh, like mascara, just playing on it on my own. I actually moved away from home when I was quite young as well. I moved away from home when I was like 16 to live in a different city. And I remember that's when my makeup love just took off because I lived on my own. Um, you started getting like student allowance at that age in Sweden. 
and a lot of it just went to experimenting with makeup so I would probably say I did a lot of it on my own not too much for my mom's next question is from Dora from Dora Future Soul here on YouTube as well I love her channel check her out if you haven't um she says I'd love to know when you move to London and what part of town you live in obviously only if what you're comfortable sharing I first moved to London in 2012 um, I moved straight after graduating like I guess our version of A-levels um, like 12th grade I did move here and I was not a pair for two years like I was an a pair for one year and a nanny for one year um, so that's when I, I first moved here so I lived in 2012 to 14 then I, I would have loved to stay at that point but I in Sweden, university is free for if you are Swedish, and I just could not just stay staying, although I wanted to, so I moved back to Sweden then. Uh, when I first lived here then, I lived in a place called Southfields, and then I moved to Putney, uh, so like southwest London, um, so that's when I moved, lived here like 10 years ago. Then in 2019, January, I moved back to London. I always wanted to move back, but yeah, I did uni, and then I worked in Sweden for a little bit, and I finally moved back. And when I did, I originally moved to Canary Wharf. I still wanted to move back to like Southwest London originally, but I have a, like the friend I mentioned earlier who lived here as well, who's my Swedish friend. She lived in East, so she wanted me to move East as well. So I moved to Canary Wharf, um, or like close to Canary Wharf, I guess. But I lived there for about, was it about a year? A year and a half? No, just over a year. Then I moved in with my boyfriend. So my camera overheated again, so I need to take a break. But like I said, I then moved in with my boyfriend and we used to live in uh, Borough, which is very, very central London. It's just next to London Bridge, which was very nice. It was a very nice location to live, but it was a bit, the flat was a bit too, I don't know, like, I don't know. It wasn't the best flat quality wise, obviously central. You kind of pay more for the location rather than the quality of the flat. So we wanted to move. Um, and that's when we did, we did that in January last year, so it's been just over a year. And we moved back to Southwest, so where I've originally lived, so I now live near like Southfields Putney area, I'm not going to say the exact location obviously, but that that area, Southfields Putney, Southwest, uh, is where I live now. So it's good, it's still very kind of, it's still relatively central to be honest, and I love this area, I just love it, and... Um, you know, they, there's lots of things to do here, it's not too far to central. So that is where I live now and, you know, this time around I lived in London for just over four years. And I used to live two years back in the day, so it's been... Sorry if you could hear that, as I was outside someone honking or something. Um, but yeah, in total it's been like a bit over six years I lived in London together, so that's, that's my little London story. Andrea C asked, if you didn't have a YouTube channel, how would you approach the planning projects if you wouldn't have the channel have you, would you still have invested in using light shadows and if yes what would your collection look like now um or look like numbers brands colors since you live in the uk and how much are you planning to stay here can you suggest some like makeup brands that are really good and know what if speak as well greens from germany so let's start with the top uh, part of the question if i didn't have a channel how would i approach my planning projects uh i did slide a little bit of panning before so in my channel in 2018 um i did like a tiny bit of like product panning on the side um but i just did like i think a product pan like just one product pan and honestly i think that's kind of what i would have done if i didn't have a channel i think i'd probably just do like one or two projects like more i'm kind of like products that i'm trying to pan and maybe like some side goals like similar to the goals that i put on uh, instagram I think that's how I would approach it. Um, I don't think I would have had as many projects as I do now. Um, so I think that's what I would do. Um, second question is, if I didn't have my channel, would I still invest in my single eyeshadow collection? I think so. Even before having a channel, I used to buy a lot of stuff. Back then it was lipstick that I purchased, but I used to have a lot, I used to purchase a lot. So I, I think my single eyeshadow collection would honestly be about the same. Same with my palette collection. I think my, my eyeshadow collection basically stay the exact same even if I didn't have my channel so yeah just, just what I have now um, I don't think my channel is affecting because I don't really do haul videos I don't really do review videos I mainly do product pans I do my swatch videos on my inner shadows but you know I don't buy shadows just to compare I don't buy dupes I don't buy things just because you know I want to do a video of them so I think it would be about the same 
And then since I live in the UK, how long I was trying to stay here, I'm suggesting some makeup brands from Nordic, Nordic like makeup brands I have already covered. So yeah, that's that question. The next question after that is, what are your hobbies outside of makeup? And that comes from Lindsay. Um, my hobbies outside of makeup is probably food. I love cooking, I love going to restaurants, I love trying different foods. That's probably the main one, honestly. Um, obviously, like, I mean, I, I don't know if it's a hobby, but spending time with my dog, training my dog. Um, exp like, I, I love exploring uh, London. I love learning about different cultures. Uh, again, it's not really a hobby. My main hobbies are, honestly, is makeup, YouTube, and cooking, and food. Uh, I used to be a massive reader. I don't read as much anymore, but it's something that I want to get back into. And apart from that, I just spend my time just watching TV and series and exploring London. So those are probably the main things I do in my uh, spare time. Uh, next question is from Christy C. She actually has a couple of questions, but the first one she has is, what do you do for work and do they like your makeup looks? Um, I already said what I do for work, but do they like my makeup looks? I think so. I mean, I don't really get many comments on my makeup looks. Sometimes I have like a couple. So I think they do. Uh, I don't go... Like, you know, when I film, for example, I do more kind of very, very colourful looks. I don't always wear as colourful looks, colourful looks as that to work. I would wear something like this, though, I think. Uh, maybe with a slightly less intense topper shadow. I have worn this with, like, the other topper shadow I use, which is more of a, to me, neutral green. So, yeah, I do think they like my looks. I am basically done with my makeup now. I just need to apply my lip products and my mascara. So I think I'm going to take a break. I need to charge my camera for a bit and I'm going to finish up my mascara and my lip product and I'll be right back. So here we are with the final look. I applied my mascara which is the Sky High Mascara from Maybelline and my lip product is Honey Love from MAC. So let me just remove my hair and I can answer the last bit of questions. By the way, this is normally how I do my hipless curls or my oh, like most of my curls. This is like the looser one I do with this kind of thicker band. This is just the robe kind of curls. Um, I do actually have a robe tie for like the loose one. It looks like crazy but let me just shake it out. And there you have the curls as well. They look amazing. I love them. Also I just recently dyed my front bits finally. I'm gonna dye the rest of my hair too but yeah that is uh, basically the finished look. Um, yeah this is how it turned out. This is how I did my green look but uh, yeah it's slightly different with the top of shadow but before I wrap up the video, let me just finish uh, talking about the last bit of questions. So, the next question from Christy C is, do you plan on visiting the States? If so, if, if you could, where would you visit? So, I actually used to live in the States. I used to live in Chicago. Uh, let me move down the camera a little bit. That's better. So, yeah, I used to live in the US. I used to live in Chicago. I lived there for six months during uni. I did an exchange semester. I studied it at Loyola the city campus so if you've been there you know maybe where it is and um, so yeah i lived there for six months uh i also visited the us before i visited the east coast basically most of the east coast i've been to i did a road trip with my parents from new york uh, down to virginia beach visiting like local places then we drove up to washington and uh, dc then we drove back to New York and then we flew from there to Minneapolis because we have family there. I've also been to Iowa, I've also been to Florida. Uh, so yeah, I've been to a lot of the US already. If I were to go to the US again, which I probably will, I would definitely want to visit the West Coast. So I want to go to like LA, San Francisco, kind of that area. That's something else I want to go. Maybe even Las Vegas as well, but I want to visit more of the West Coast next time I go. Uh, let's see, I have only one more question to go, and that is from Raquel Dian Diancy. Sorry for butchering your name. Why did you, uh, and she said, Why did you start a YouTube channel? If you could only buy one makeup brand for the rest of your life, which one would you choose? What are your hobbits, hobbies outside of makeup, of course, and how is your puppy doing? So, first of all, why did I start a YouTube channel? I wanted to start a YouTube channel for years and years and years. I actually did which a lot of people probably don't know. I did actually start a YouTube channel back in 2012, 2013, probably 2013. When I lived in London last time, I was an au pair at the time and I started a YouTube channel. I only did a handful of channels. I tried to keep it going 
um, but yeah, life just got in the way and I stopped. But I maybe did like 10 or 20 videos, I can't remember. Uh, they are private now though, so you can't find them on my channel. But that's when originally I started my channel. Um, so yeah, that, that's... I always wanted to do it though, even since like before that, when I was... Maybe in 2009 was when I first was thinking about doing a channel. I did one again very, very briefly for a couple of months. And then I stopped and... Yeah, I always wanted to do it again, but then I was always too scared about what people would think. I was too like I think I was too scared of outside time and people finding out about it. Um, and then the reason why I finally started it properly was after uni, I graduated. I st stayed in the city that I started in in Sweden, and I lived there for like a bit after graduating. And most of my friends moved away, but I had a couple still there, obviously. But I had a lot more spare time. I was working, and then I was like. You know, I have a lot of spare time after work. I don't do things with my friends every day like I used to at uni. So I was like, this is probably the right time. So that's when I started it. I graduated uni like June 2017 and I started my channel in January 2018. And it was just something to do. I feel like I've, I was a little bit down after uni at that time. I was going through a breakup. I, um, again, a lot of my friends had moved away and I just felt a bit lonely. And I was like, you know, I'm gonna do this for me. I'm gonna start my channel. And that's kind of how I started it. And then I keep, kept it going since then. I haven't really had any breaks. I mean, I had like a month or two break here and there. Uh, but yeah, that's basically how I started my channel and why I guess I started my channel. Um, next question was, if you could only buy one makeup brand for the rest of your life, which one would you choose? This is such a hard one because I, and there's not a single brand that I have like every single product from. Oh, that's such a hard one. I was thinking like maybe Maybelline because I like Maybelline foundations and mascaras and base products but I don't know if I like their eyeshadows, I haven't tried their eyeshadows at least not in years. Um, maybe Pat McGrath. Maybe Pat McGrath would be it because they have special eyeshadows but I, they also have more mainstream kind of products. I haven't, I don't know if they have mascara though but maybe that would be it because I heard really good things about the foundation. I haven't tried it but I had tried the powder which I love, I tried their um, obviously eyeshadow palettes I love, I they do really good masks and shimmers and special shadows, they, I love their lip products, the lip glosses are really nice, so maybe that would be it, I don't know, I, I'm trying to think if I could find a routine with all of the eyeshadows, but I think, oh with all the products, but I think, I think that would be it, maybe that or Charlotte Tilbury, but again I haven't really, they don't really have that many special eyeshadows though. So probably Pat McGrath to be honest. I think then I would get my indie fix with eyeshadows, but I still get all of the rest of my products. So that's probably the brand I would pick. I really hope I never have to pick that though, but that's probably the brand I would go with. It would be quite expensive though, but you know, I'll probably have way of a smaller collection if I could only have one brand. Then she asked, how, what are your hobbies outside of makeup, which I've already answered. And lastly, we have, how is your puppy doing? She's doing great. She is still a minimum menace. She's still very much a puppy at heart. She turned one at the end of February. Um, and we almost had her for a year now. We picked her up end of April, so we're getting there. And yeah, she's doing amazing. She's, she's great. She's definitely calmed down a bit. She's still, like I said, very much a puppy at heart, though. She is, has a lot of energy still. Uh, but I think, especially with spaniels, they have a lot of energy in general, but they take a, a while to settle down. I think, you know, I don't think she's gonna be fully like out of the puppy stage until maybe she's like two or three or even older than that. Um, but yeah, she's doing great. She's, she brings us so much joy to our life. Like we honestly don't even know what we did with all our time before we had her. And yeah, I, I love her very, very much. She's, yeah, she's doing great. Um, maybe I can see if I can bring her in. She's in the bedroom currently with my boyfriend. She came back from a long walk with him. But let me see if I can grab her just for the outro of this video. So I am back with Lexi. <laughs> She's right here. She is great. She's such a big girl now. But this is what she looks like. I remember holding her up like this when she was a puppy. But she's very tired now because she had a long walk with dad. Uh, but yeah, she's doing great. She's currently fixing it with my makeup that is in front of me. Um, but yeah, she's amazing. Lexi girl, are you a good girl? You good girl. You tired puppy pants. Yeah, she's a tired puppy. Uh, but yeah, that is basically it for this video, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. Get ready with me. It's been forever if you check the time when I started this video and now. 
it's been a long video and this is kind of why I don't do good rhetoric with me very often because it just takes a long long time to film uh, but yeah I really hope you enjoyed it and that you think I did a good job answering the questions if you have any additional questions down below feel free to leave them there and otherwise I really hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are and I'll catch you in my next one bye guys